that's when it went off and I woke up a couple minutes later like 20 feet away from the Humvee face down in the dirt and uh, one of my guys was actually dragging me away by the handle in the back of the flak jacket because he, he, um, he didn't know how bad I was hurt or anything like that. He was like dragging me back towards like the hard paved road. My name's Cody Bowers. I was with 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, 1st Mardiv. And what kicked off my drive to come back to school was to find something that I love to do and enjoy doing it every day for the rest of my life. And that will in turn reflect on your happiness in your family life and social life. I was in the United States Marine Corps from 2003 to 2005. I enrolled in the Marines when I was 17. Um, after graduating high school, I left for boot camp in like June of 2003. And then uh, went to boot camp down to Paris Island, went to School of Infantry. And I, I knew I, I tested pretty high on like the ASVAP and I could have basically had my pick of any job that I wanted, but I wanted infantry because I wanted to feel like I made a difference and I was actually doing something. Um, so I chose infantry, um, went in boot camp, school of infantry after that. And then, uh, after I graduated from school of infantry, I went to, I ended up getting stationed in 29 Palms, California, where I was with second battalion, seventh Marines, first Marine division. Um, and probably about three weeks, maybe a month or so after getting to the unit, uh, we deployed to Iraq, so I didn't really have any time to like get to know anybody that was with me. Uh, thankfully, I had a couple guys that I was in boot camp with and, and SOI ended up getting stationed with the same unit, so I knew them. But So uh, maybe like a month or two into the deployment, we, uh, we were on a, another night patrol. Uh, this time we were, uh, it was a mounted patrol, so we were all in Humvees and we always traveled in groups of four Humvees. I was in the second Humvee and we had just wrapped up like our, our patrol shift, I guess you could say. And we were turning around to head back to base. And at the time we were on a paved road and when we went to turn around, the first Humvee like swung out wide onto this dirt road. And the Humvee I was in, the second Humvee, uh, went to turn around, but made like more of a sharp turn uh, going off the road onto the dirt. And seconds after we turned off the main road uh, onto the dirt, uh, the front right tire ran over a landmine. I was on top this uh, top of the Humvee uh, on the on the in the turret, or yeah, I was on top of the Humvee in the turret, and uh, I remember a a wire. Like a, it wasn't a wire connected to any of the IEDs, but it was like a telephone wire or like something, just like a, a thin metal wire somebody had been using or like hanging down. And I was worried about it getting caught on the barrel. So the last thing I remember was um, kind of grabbing a hold of the wire and like pushing it out and up so it wouldn't snag on the barrel and then letting it like go over my head. And I remember turning around and letting go of the wire. And like right when I let go of the wire, um, that's when it went off and I woke up a couple minutes later like 20 feet away from the Humvee face down in the dirt and uh, one of my guys was actually dragging me away by the handle in the back of the flak jacket because he, he, um, he didn't know how bad I was hurt or anything like that. He was like dragging me back towards like the hard paved road. So that's when I got my uh, Purple Heart. I had, had a plan before I even went in the Marine Corps um, before I went in, my plan was to do my 20 years in the Marines, retire, get out, and then uh, become a cop, of all things. And so after my Marine Corps career was cut short and I got out, um, I still wanted to be a cop. So I applied to a couple, couple openings here and there, kind of in the tri-state area, and, um, and didn't hear anything. After the whole process got done, I didn't hear anything for 
I'm gonna say like three months. And then out of the blue, I get a letter saying, you know, thank you for applying, the position had been filled, such and such. Um, when I first enrolled in the community college, I had no idea what I wanted to do and kind of was just taking a shot in the dark, looking at, you know, what jobs were out there, what paid the most or, or you know, what, uh, what interested me. And I actually enrolled to be um, an x-ray technician, like in the healthcare field. And I was, I was leaning towards like nuclear medicine and about halfway through my first couple medical classes, like medical terminology, I realized, yeah, this ain't gonna happen. And uh, it had, I had no interest in it whatsoever. So I kind of like reassessed what I wanted. And I knew uh, the things that interested me were like law enforcement and um, wildlife and fisheries. So after having that bad experience with law enforcement, uh, you know, my next passion was the outdoors, wildlife, fishing, stuff like that. And I um, changed my major and went, I ended up getting my associates in uh, biology there at the community college. And then decided to transfer up here because it was the closest school that had wildlife and fisheries major. My name is Faith Hanshu. I am a licensed independent clinical social worker and I serve here at the Vet Center in Martinsburg as a readjustment veterans counselor. The loss of purpose that veterans feel whenever they leave the military, I do believe it is a sense of a loss of purpose. You know, a lot of times it's stigmatized and diagnosed as PTSD and just a, an avoidance and readjusting to civilian life. But you know, also we've you know, shown so much more you know, and have reviewed research in something called moral injury. And that's you know, a lot deeper than post-traumatic stress disorder. It's you know, the moral injury being you know, a way that their belief systems have been altered from things that they have witnessed whenever they were in combat. And just ways that you know, life pre-military just doesn't sync up with some of the traumas and the horrors of world war that they've experienced and all the exposure to a third world country and the poverty. As we see is just a, a lack of purpose and loss of identity that comes from being in the military. And I feel like one of the great things that vet centers do is you know, create that camaraderie you know, between the other veterans that attend here in our group meetings. And you know, also as an individual therapy, we help veterans to find a new sense of purpose. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of guys do when they get out. They don't really know, uh, you get told what, it's definitely a simplis more simplistic lifestyle, let's put it that way. Um, when you're in, you get told when you can do everything, basically. Um, so you really don't have to worry about anything. You get done what you're supposed to get done, and you're, you're fine. Um, in the, I guess, the real world, you... Uh, you know, you have to rely on yourself to do everything. Um, you have to make time for it. You know, nobody actually tells you, hey, you need to pay that bill. Um, you know, you just have to rely on yourself to do it. So I think a lot of guys struggle with that lack of, uh, lack of leadership, I guess, when you get out and don't really know how to respond to it, especially the guys that have been in for, you know, 10, 15 years. They're so used to that lifestyle, it's kind of a culture shock when they get out. My biggest piece of advice would be to find something that you're like truly passionate about, uh, regardless if it doesn't pay that much money. Find something that you wake up in the morning and you love to do and make that your career. Um, nobody wants to go to a, a job every day that you're not happy in because that's just gonna make you more miserable. And if you're already struggling with the issues of, you know, family, job, work, um, house, stuff like that, then going to work every day at a job that you don't like is just gonna add to that. What do you want us to acknowledge or commemorate with this song? Uh, yeah, uh, we lost a lot of guys over there. One guy I was protecting, uh, particularly um, close to, he was actually the first guy that befriended me when I got to the unit. Um, 
and that is Lance Corporal Eric Barr.